Okay, um, so uh, what I wanted to do next was draw a scale model of our Milky Way. Now remember that if I dot one eye, that's the sun, then the distance across the galaxy here would be, go from here to New York City if I dot in an eye on that scale. And so now I'm going to make it this small, 100,000 light years, because I'm going to try to go to Andromeda Galaxy, so that's going to be 23 of these. So I actually really haven't done quite enough. Uh, if I were to really draw this to scale, I'd have to push Andromeda even farther out, so it would be 23 of these would get me to Andromeda. But that gives you a, a feeling, at least, for how far away Andromeda Galaxy is relative to the size of our Milky Way. But then, containing Milky Way and Andromeda, they're contained within, I should say, the local group. <clears throat> okay, so the local group then contains the Milky Way galaxy, Andromeda galaxy, and about two dozen others. And these are smaller galaxies. And so the size then of our local group is bigger than a galaxy. And so this is something I might ask you on an exam to say, take these distances and order them from smallest to biggest. And so I might say have the size of a football field and distance across the Earth and distance to a planet, distance to nearest star. I have the local group in there. And a lot of people, if they're not ready for that question, would think that the local group must be something that's fairly like a group of stars or something. But no, we're talking about a group of galaxies. And so this is bigger than a galaxy. And this contains a, this is local only with, in res, with respect to distances between galaxies. And there are trillions of galaxies. So this is our local group of galaxies that is bigger than either the Milky Way or Andromeda, which are contained within it. So the distance then across the local group is about 3 million light years. which is a little bigger than the distance between the Milky Way and Andromeda. So these other smaller galaxies are either orbiting around the Milky Way or orbiting around Andromeda. There's one fairly big galaxy called Triangulum that orbits around Andromeda. That contains something like 10 billion stars. That it's thought there are something like two dozen other galaxies going around either Milky Way or Andromeda. And so that comprises what we call our local group. So going to this next scale of distance, then we're looking at about 3 million light years. But if we want to look at groups of these clusters of galaxies, that is uh, what is sometimes referred to as a supercluster of galaxies. So a supercluster is a whole bunch of these local groups, or a cluster of clusters of galaxies. And so that's the next biggest uh, structure in the universe, is a supercluster of galaxies. How big are they? Well, let's try to get a feeling for it by first realizing how many galaxies they can contain. Superclusters may contain thousands or even millions of galaxies. Okay, and so here then, this would be a cluster of galaxies here. That would be like our local group, a cluster. But here, if we look at this scale, we see that a supercluster 
is one of these big, huge groups. Like this might be a supercluster there. And that would be another supercluster there. So oftentimes these superclusters happen along these lanes of galaxies. It seems like galaxies move along these lanes, and then where these lanes intersect, their galaxies pile up. And so you start getting these big concentrations of galaxies here. Uh, and uh, uh, then we have this great wall attractor, and so this seems to be what our galaxy and our local group is moving toward. We're not exactly sure why. But on these large scales, then this might be another supercluster containing thousands or millions of galaxies. And so our supercluster is called the Virgo supercluster. And so our Virgo supercluster is called that because uh, the center of our supercluster is in the constellation of Virgo. So that just identifies the location of this giant elliptical galaxy. Now what's an elliptical galaxy? Well, it's one of these big kind of uh, round ballish shaped galaxies. They tend to be much bigger. Here's a spiral, see how they're flat. Okay. But here, it turns out that the majority of galaxies, and this may be because they've, it's been flat galaxies that have collided, these are elliptical. And because they can get so big, they can be at the center of a supercluster. So that's what we have then when we go to this next largest size scale is uh, <clears throat> we have a whole bunch of these local groups or clusters of galaxies comprising our supercluster. Here's the center, a giant elliptical galaxy. Then out here, here's our local group now. Doesn't look so big anymore, does it? So this is three million light years across. But that's not looking so big anymore with respect to the distance to the center of our Virgo supercluster. And then here are other galaxy clusters, other than our own local group. And lucky for us, it appears as though our Uh, local group is out near the edge of the Virgo supercluster. Why is that lucky? Well, because it seems like when you're closer to the center of all of this action, there is more of a likelihood for collisions. Just like if you live in Los Angeles, your insurance rates go up because it's more likely to run into a car because there's more cars. And, but if you're closer to the center, of our Virgo supercluster, you're more likely to run into galaxies because there's more galaxies. And so we think that this giant elliptical galaxy is the result of collisions of many smaller clusters that have given rise to this one mammoth sized galaxy. And in the center, we think it has what's called a black hole, which is a region of collapsed stars. Uh, that are essentially smashed to high density, maybe even zero size. And this black hole has uh, something like a billion times the mass of the sun contained within it. And that's sitting in the center of this giant elliptical galaxy. And so these other clusters then, we think, tend to circle around this giant elliptical galaxy. And so this is like the gravitational center for our supercluster. So let's try to think back for a second. Remember that we said before that the Earth is in motion on its axis, it's rotating, and so if you're at the equator at least, you're moving about a thousand miles an hour because of that. We also know that the Earth is in motion around the Sun, and 
so that's something like to get around the sun once in one year, the Earth has to be moving something like 18 miles a second to do that. Okay? And so if you, say, had a time machine and you were wanted to go into the future, you, I think the most difficult part of that calculation would be figuring out where the Earth is going to be. <laughs> because the Earth is moving, because of all these different motions, you'd be much more likely to end up in space somewhere if you just went through time to another location, you'd have to make sure the Earth is still there. <laughs> and if the Earth is moving on that scale, then we go to the motion of the Sun and the rest of the solar system around the center of the galaxy, something like 140 miles a second. And then it's almost enough to make you dizzy. You've got this local group, we think, probably in orbit around the center of the Virgo supercluster. And then this whole supercluster is moving toward the great attractor along these lanes of, of galaxies. Uh, and so who knows why it's doing that. Uh, but uh, there's all kinds of motions. And even though we don't feel these motions, they're all there. And so we're just flying through the universe uh, because of all of these different motions. It's almost enough to make you dizzy. And so this distance then, associated with our Virgo supercluster, it's about 60 million light years. Okay, and so if you were to look at the center of our Virgo supercluster in the constellation of Virgo, uh, and you would see the, this giant elliptical galaxy, you wouldn't be seeing it as it is now. You'd be seeing it as it was 60 million years ago. And so this is a significant amount of time that has elapsed. Uh, the dinosaurs had just recently died out 60 million years ago. So this, at the time when the light from the giant elliptical galaxy is just getting to our eyes today, was the early stages of the age of the mammals, where the mammals started diversifying uh, and filling in all of those uh, uh, open uh, uh, places in the uh, biological community where the dinosaurs had vacated. Okay, and so that was very early on in what's called the Cenozoic Era. A long, long time ago, way before uh, there were uh, primates, monkeys, apes, orangutans, or anything that looked like a human. Uh, and so that is how far back we're looking in time when we see the light that is coming from the Virgo supercluster. And so this then is a still larger distance. Instead of just being 3 million light years, which is typical of the size of one of these galactic clusters, we're now talking about tens of millions of light years for a Virgo supercluster. And so is that it then? Is that the end of the universe? No. We can see that there are many superclusters, and there's something like two trillion galaxies in the universe. So even if a supercluster contained millions of galaxies, there would still have to be a lot of superclusters. And so this is just looking at a tiny slice of the sky where we've been able to count galaxies, uh, and uh, we're assuming that the structure that we see here which kind of looks like, almost like soap bubbles with voids in between, uh, that uh, uh, <clears throat> that uh, these, uh, this census of the universe is very incomplete because the amount of angle that we're looking at here is vanishingly small. It's like looking at a, essentially a speck of dust at arm's length. Uh, uh, looking across the angle of that. And we're not seeing much of the universe here, but we assume that the rest of the universe would have the same structure. And once we have had time to fill in some of the gaps, we'll be able to verify that. And so what about the distance between superclusters? Well, now we're talking about a few hundred million light years between adjacent supercluster. And so as we saw in that previous picture, the 
superclusters are connected by strange interwoven patterns that are produced by unknown gravity forces. So we might have a supercluster here, another supercluster there, another one here, another one there, another one here, and then we have a void in between. And when we figure out the forces that connect together these superclusters, each one of these, let's say, is a supercluster that I'm shading in here, and then we have the voids, we find that there's not enough matter in known matter, at least, in these galaxies to attract them together over such large distance scales. And so we believe that these unknown gravity forces that are holding together the structure of the universe uh, uh, are uh, what we call dark matter. And that doesn't mean that we know what it is. This is just a way of putting a name to our ignorance. We don't know what dark matter is. But we think that dark matter is what's holding together these superclusters on these large distance scales. And so we are working very hard at trying to determine what this dark matter is. It's an unknown and very weakly interacting form of matter, but it still has plenty of gravity. And so at larger distances, it seems to be the primary force that acts as the scaffolding that holds together the universe on this large scale and is perhaps responsible for producing very large black holes and also uh, in the early stages of the formation of our universe this dark matter is responsible for causing galaxies to form as well. But these galaxies have this strange pattern uh, that uh, is held together by what we, um, what we call dark matter. And so as we go to greater and greater distances, and this is something that is yet to be conclusively demonstrated, but we think that all of the galaxies might be held together by this dark matter into what we could call a super duper cluster of galaxies. So this might be the whole universe, then. It would be this one single super duper cluster of galaxies. So you think, what a silly name, <laughs> and I didn't make it up. That I am using it because that's what everybody else is calling it, too. Okay, and so what would the size, then, of the universe be, which is the size of the super-duper cluster, if it exists? Well, we think that the size of the universe as a whole is on the order of uh, something like 40, three billion light years. And uh, that would be from, that would be like the radius of the universe. The diameter would be double that, maybe something like 92 or so billion light years. And uh, so this then is huge, even with respect to the distances between superclusters. Here we might be talking about a hundred million light years between this supercluster here and this supercluster there, maybe a hundred million, maybe a hundred million there. But here we're talking about, well, a thousand million is a billion, so we're talking about trillions of galaxies in a, contained within a distance of about 43 billion light years. And so is there more to the universe than we can see? Yes, this is just the visible universe. Uh, so there could be more to the universe that's outside of the range at which light can, could have traveled over the age of the universe. 
So, in other words, you look out to what we call our light horizon. You're seeing uh, what exists which could have sent information that we could receive uh, that would still be getting to our eyes over the age of the universe. But if it's farther out than that, then it would be beyond our light horizon. And so there could be much of the universe that is beyond our visible horizon. This could just be a tiny part of a much larger universe. We don't even know how much bigger the whole universe would be. And it's also possible that there could be other universes as well. Okay, so this is just the visible universe. The total universe is much larger. And although there's no proof of this, it is possible that there are other universes. But even though this possibility is there, and a lot of scientists do believe that there are other universes, we, because science is based on evidence and data and proof, uh, until we actually get proof that there are other universes. We can't say for sure that they do in fact exist. 